All right, so I'm going to show you guys how to um, how to render your project once you've got your furniture all set. Um, I don't have all the furniture, of course, but um, that doesn't matter for uh, for the purposes of this demonstration. So um, when we're looking at our objects, uh, this is um, in visual style rendered. You can see right now it's all in what we call global materials, which means that it's all this gray color. Um, I'm going to show you how to make your own materials, um, also how to put a background in. So um, let me start off with that. So first thing I'm going to do, I'm in my normal view here, something like this in standard. I'm going to go to a front view, and I'm going to draw a rectangle, and I'm just going to draw a kind of landscape at and then I'm going to right click and go into a perspective view from a front view and that'll keep my grid vertical over here um, so it's in front now so I want to move it back so I'm going to go to a right view so I'll switch my view to a right view so my grid is going that way and then move back behind my room and then I'm going to extrude that curve out a little bit. It doesn't really matter because I'm going to get rid of it in a second here. So I'm going to go to perspective again. I'm going to now explode this with this right here. Or you can type explode. And that just breaks it into little pieces, of course. So now I can delete all of these and just have a flat plane there. So that's just a surface. And I could actually um, go in delete my curve that I used as just a plane there. Okay, so the way you go to your rendering tools, um, hopefully you guys all have this bar over here. Um, if you've got Windows, of course you do. If you've got Mac, you do set your preferences under Rhinoceros preferences uh, to your theme. Make sure it says Rhino for Windows there. And if it doesn't, change it. And from the program, again, of course, remember to save before you do. Um, and that will give you that tab because you need this Render Tools tab. Um, and then you're looking for this little um, Materials Panel tool here. And once you click that, it will bring you into your Render Options. And the interface here, uh, Library Materials on the bottom. You've got your custom materials on the top, and then the materials that are associated with your model over here on the right. So, <clears throat> to make a new material, well, just putting a regular material in. So, I'm going to put glass in for the window. Actually, hold on a second, sorry. Let me uh, let me first do lights. So, lighting, you, you've got a couple of different options. Point, um, point lights are the easier of the two. If I look at it in wireframe and I switch back over to Rhino my, my 3D here my materials and renderings over I'll switch back over here um, and I can now um, see the object in wireframe point light and then it says point light location and I'll snap it you can put it inside of your object if you find your center and this is glass is going to be glass so I will see this when I change the material. So um, now I want to do object properties for this. So uh, right click and go to object properties. Um, or you can type properties like that. And um, you can see that I've got a point light here. And I've got my intent to control how bright it is, uh, your shadow intensity, how, how, the, how um, many shadows it has, that kind of thing. Um, and you can also change the color of it. So if I light or, you know, if I wanted it to be more like a nightclub or something like that, I can put different colored filters on it. So I'll just go right about there. It's a little warm. And close that. So that's point lights. And if I look at it in rendered, you can see uh, because it's inside of an object, um, it's still showing you some light, but not as much as when we uh, when we change the material on it. So go back over to our materials panel here, and I'm going to use some glass. So glass right here, I can apply it 
whatever I want, and then it goes over here under this panel here. So I can apply the same to all of my locations here. Um, so it's transparent now I can see into the room that way. Um, if I want to use a different glass, I can do that as well. Take this glass and maybe put it on this ball here. Uh, that gives me my light source and it makes it independent so that if I edit this material it won't edit the rest of the glass. So uh, editing materials, if I click on say this glass here and I wanted to change the it, lower that gloss, I can do that. Transparency, um, I can make it more opaque. Uh, reflectivity, if you wanted to um, show uh, your objects in the room, some more mirrored, if you will. I'll turn that down a little bit. So that's my glass. Um, and then, you know, other, other materials here, I've got like this stripe material. Um, I've got different types of brick, marble for bathroom areas, cobblestone for like street for countertops, um, white reflective. I can use that for uh, for like wall paint, and um, I've already actually got it over here. So if I click and drag walls, now every object in here is separate. From, um, from one another. So this rug is different than, I've also got this floor separate. Um, all of these windows are separate. It's a separate piece. As a matter of fact, the feet for the couch are separate. And you want that so you can apply different materials to the object. It's actually even better if you have everything on separate layers too. Um, just as good practice, um, if you were gonna use an external rendering engine, have some more problems if you, if you don't do that. Hmm, looks like I've got this up here. Let me just make sure it's there. We go. Okay, so that's all lined up. All right, so now I'm going to go to um, uh, create. If I go plus here, uh, that creates a new default material here, and I can. Uh, double click on it or I'm right click on it and go to edit material here and it brings up this panel and um, I can change the color of it here reflectivity all that kind of stuff um, I can also bring in under textures under choose a file and I can choose uh, say let's go to my documents or downloads mm -hmm. right here this image which is of uh, some brick that I just took a picture of with my phone. Um, now that will be the material. Um, then I can go over here. Bump does is it makes a vector map of the, uh, of the material and makes it have texture. So I'll select this and open it. And you want to make sure your tiling is the same. It's basically how many per object will this um, show. So if I do like 20 here, I want to do 20 here, I want to do 20 here, do 20 here, so it all matches up. Okay. And then, um, once I'm done, I can X this and save it. If you've got a PC, it's going to be a little different. You're going to have little windows over here on the right. Um, you'll have to find the materials window over here to, uh, to edit things. So now I'm going to apply that brick materials wall here, which is again a separate object. Now again, remember that um, I, I did not edit this very well. Um, if I edited this in Photoshop, it would have uh, um, I can use the transform tool and different tools to make sure everything lines up perfectly. So this uh, grout pattern lines up, which here, so you can really see the tiles. Um, but if you use like a default material, they usually have it set up pretty well. So if I like go to this brick here, you'll see it's nice and evenly uh, designed there. Okay, so other materials, I'm going to use leather, um, my black leather here, and I'll use uh, copper for this. Um, and I can use, uh, let's see, let me grab some wood from over here. I 
que Douglas fir and apply that to the base of my object here. This try to peek in through here. Douglas fir. There we go. Douglas fir right there. Okay, so I've got black leather couch with some wood feet. Then I'm going to use my, on this. And again, if I wanted to edit this, uh, you can see my stripe is right here because I just checked on it. Uh, intensity, all that stuff. If I want to change maybe my tiling, the stripe's a little smaller or bigger. You can see that it becomes checker if I do both. So if I just do one, it goes that way. Or if I do one thirty this way, it goes the other way. Didn't mean to do that. And then uh, the bump map, there is no bump map for it. So um, that has nothing to edit to make it match. And let's do some uh, floorboards, which I think I've already got over here. Let's see, yeah, floorboards, put it right there. And I can change, I don't quite like that tiling, so I'm gonna do five tab and that makes it a little bit bigger intensity I'll bring it down a little bit uh, my gloss finish it's a little too glossy for me um, B, turn that way down okay and um, I also made a material out of a painting um, that material so I've only got one tile on it. I actually made this size the same size as the painting so it will fit. And then I just click and drag it over here and you can see I've made a bump map with a one tile hit a texture um, color with the image file. Okay, and then the last thing I want to do is my background here. So this background and that rectangle I just extruded, exploded and took that front surface off of. If I Add a material. Let's call. Let's see which one is it. Right here, default material seven or nine. Okay, so then I right click, edit material, and go to my, go to color. Choose, and I'm going to go to my large JPEG here. And select a sunset. Okay, open. Now the size of your file that you're using here is quite important. So you want to make sure you have a nice uh, large size file. If it doesn't, it might not work. Um, check to see the resolution on your file. Okay, so that material is right here and then if I click material there you can see it makes it a sunset in the background and if I zoom into the room you can kind of see it you can see that it's not showing as much as we want it to so let's go back and edit our glass make it more transparent Gloss all the way down. Reflectivity, I don't, let's find it. Put that down a little bit more, just right about there. Okay. And then what you want to do is you want to get a good vantage of your room. And I'll close these windows here so I can kind of see what the landscape look of it. 
and you want to make sure you get right into your room. And if you're having problems because your room isn't deep enough, something you can do is you can uh, uh, surface. I guess it won't let me extrude from this. Sorry, from this view. So I'll go into my other view here, and I think uh, version switching back and forth should be down in the bottom corner here. All right. So now I'm going to extrude surface. Select this surface here. This, and then hit enter and bring this back like that. And now I can. I also need to extrude this surface right there and bring that back to this wall here and do the same with the floor and I'm just clicking on the snap point and it should bring it automatically to the snap point and then I can apply the materials again um, to make sure that you've got a deep enough room all right, let's get back into here because I made mine deep enough, I think. So let's go. I want to see my painting a little bit better. All right, like that. And then I'm going to Boolean union this object to this object. Enter. So it gets rid of that line there. And then I'm going to go to my render settings. So that is under the top up here, render and properties. Um, and this is again going to look different if you've got a PC or a Mac. So um, you'll have to kind of uh, understand what we're looking for and kind of go through the user interface a little bit differently. PC will have things like uh, the sun and the sky up here. Make sure you turn your sun on and your sky on and everything in, the, in there. Um, and then I'm going to make this 19 wide, high, 300 dpi, anti-aliasing. Aliasing is basically you get these little spectrum dots that run alongside the, uh, the object uh, fragments. Um, and so that cleans that up. It takes a little bit longer to do it, but it makes for a better, um, better image. And then if you're uh, not using a background image, which you don't have to, of course, uh, radiant here, and then choose two different colors, like a nice sky blue kind of color here, and then more of like the fog on the horizon kind of color. And that'll give you kind of a sky tone. Um, but you could also, for example, if I wanted to make it a little bit more like go with some yellows like that and then close these and you can see that I'm getting the color kind of coming through into the room from this I've changed those uh, parameters then we just go up here and you go to render preview and what that's gonna do is that'll um, that'll start the rendering process and it'll render a little bit quicker than it typically is. So you can see your aspect ratio, make sure that your lighting is looking the way you want it to be. You can change the intensity, add some more bulbs, whatever you need to do to make the uh, the room look better before you do your final render. So while that goes, I'm gonna just pause it for a second. Okay, so we can kind of see what we've got going on here. This is uh, would be similar to lighting and that kind of thing, but the longer rendering would give you more detail. Um, close this and make some adjustments. So, first adjustment I'm going to make, I'm going to go back over to my render settings here, materials, pop this up, pop this, and I want to edit this material a little bit. Um, turn the gloss down all the way on it so it will uh, not be so white. And then let's go to my Douglas fur here. Um, Turn up some of 
and then I'm going to go up here to my uh, wireframe here click on this point light and go to my object properties and turn down my shim because I thought that was a little too intense, too hard. And light intensity I thought was good. Close all this. Sorry, go back in here, uh, right click and go to rent, zoom in a little bit, spacebar pan up. Okay, so now this time I'm going to do um, my final renderings. I'm going to go up here and go to render and I'm um, going to you can just type render um, instead of render preview. Hit render here or type render and it'll start the longer rendering. I'm going to pause this again. This could take quite some time so it just depends on your your graphics card and that kind of thing so I'll come back when it's done. Alright so I here's the finished product um, as you can see it looks pretty good getting this weird artifact over here which I don't really like but uh, you know just for test purposes um, I did go back in and um, uh, test rendered a couple more times decided I didn't like the background changed the background I added another little light over here to have lossing shadows which I think looks nice um, and you know that's that's basically it uh, of course I don't like this striped pattern um, here it looks like linoleum or something not a rug take a picture of some kind of a rug texture and put that on there but overall that's you know kind of it um, two other things I want to show you before we go um, how to set which is kind of cool so if I uh, uh, wanted to automatically have my view set to that same um, same kind of render location but change things um, I can go up to view here and go to set view go to uh, show or I can right click go to uh, uh, set view and go to show named views panel or if you have a PC it's that little down arrow next to uh, person you're in so we'll go to those show name views panel looks like this you'll add a view and title it whatever you want rendered view it's fine and then you can close this and if you rotate around right click or click on this over here for PC people um, go to set view show name views and if we go restore it brings me right back where I was which is nice for oh I got everything set up the way I like it except for the rendering doesn't look the way I want okay so that's uh, the named views thing which really so um, that's it for this